Okay, first I'd like to thank the organizers for including our paper to this great conference. Uh, I'm Wei Jiang from uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. This is joint work with uh, Min Dai from NUS, Stephen Ko from Boston University, and Chongqing from Suzhou University. So our talk is about uh, uh, ec economy of big money. Uh, as uh, Nakamoto is, uh, the name in our title is uh, the designer of Bitcoin system. So he mimicked the uh, the gold mining or natural resource mining to design the, the supply in the Bitcoin system. So what we do is we try to leverage the classic hotel model for natural resource mining to investigate uh, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining. So, so first, Bitcoin, uh, uh, okay, we talk this quite a lot in this conference. It's actually a payment uh, system uh, uh, with a peer-to-peer -peer network. There are two group of uh, participants who play a very important role in this uh, uh, Bitcoin system. One is, of course, users. User, uh, they pay commission fees and enjoy transaction services. Uh, user use Bitcoin for certain reasons. For example, the low cost uh, of the transaction in Bitcoin system, the anonymous feature, fast transaction, and the less regulation. Uh, and uh, however, the other group of participants also play a, a very important role in the Bitcoin system. There are miners. Miner, what they do is they provide verification service uh, by validating uh, the trans transaction orders submitted by users. And for their hard work, they uh, get, get compensated in two ways. One is block rewards and the, the other is trans transaction fees. So let's check the detail about uh, just some data about block rewards. So there are two lines in this picture. The decline line shows the block rewards for each successfully mined block from time to time. So at the very beginning, for each block, uh, each successfully mined block, the miner will get 50 bitcoins for uh, as block rewards. But but uh, uh, later it will decrease to be 25 for one block. And actually, this block rewards halved every four years, and uh, eventually it will uh, it will vanish. So as one can see, block rewards as one one source of compensation to miners' uh, mining work is uh, deterministic, is exact given in this uh, system, and uh, it's scarce. Uh, it will terminate in a future year, uh, 2140. So the scarcity in the Bitcoin supply implies that Bitcoin is an uh, exhaustible resource. But let's check what happened for the transfer fees. So this figure, uh, although the transfer fees in Bitcoin system uh, in the Bitcoin transaction is paid in Bitcoin, but this figure shows uh, the US dollars uh, amount as, uh, for daily transfer fees. So as one can see, the uh, transfer fees is uh, very dynamic. Uh, it's actually in, in Dawson de determined by the Bitcoin system and it's unlimited. And uh, you can see one daily amount transfer fee could be higher than 1 million US dollar. And uh, actually it's the key incentive for miners after the end of the block rewards. So actually, although the, 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 uh, in the very beginning, the design of Bitcoin mining or Bitcoin supply mimics the, uh, the supply of gold, but actually the Bitcoin mining uh, is quite different from the gold mining. First, uh, in the friction sites, the Bitcoin mining, uh, uh, you, the miner will get a Bitcoin uh, as a virtual asset there's no storage cost. And, uh, and, and in addition, the Bitcoin miner will suffer uh, uh, substantial liquidation costs. On, on, on the other hand, the gold mining, uh, the, the miner will suffer uh, significant storage costs, but uh, usually low liquidation costs. And then in terms of output, the Bitcoin miner will uh, usually uh, come from predetermined block rewards, and uh, in addition has uh, transaction fees, which is quite dynamic. But a, a traditional gold miner, they have no transaction fees from the uh, from their mining business, and in addition, Bitcoin mining suffers uncertain like the the from a mining lottery. Uh, actually, mining business is very competitive. Only one miner at one period can get the uh, uh, block rewards and transfer fees. But traditional gold mining has no such a lottery uh, uncertain from a lottery feature, and. Uh, most importantly for Bitcoin miner facing no storage costs and uh, and uh, uh, possibly high liquidation costs. So Bitcoin miner may prefer to adjust the inventory to maximize the return. Uh, uh, in, in, contra in contrast, the uh, traditional uh, resource mining uh, like the gold miner uh, facing the significant storage costs and the low liquidation costs, they prefer to adjust the production. So, 
<clears throat> the difference between Bitcoin mining and gold mining motivate us to uh, study Bitcoin mining uh, by clarify its uh, economic objective and uh, uh, investigate its uh, policy uh, space. And uh, our research also motivated by two stylized facts about uh, Bitcoin mining. The first one is about miners' inventory. Uh, this figure shows the proportional inventory as shown by this uh, black line. Uh, the proportional inventory is uh, computed as the ratio of miners' aggregate inventory uh, times T divided by the cumulative Bitcoin supply uh, times T. And uh, this is the data we borrowed from Susan Asher's uh, working paper. So the nominator will increase by the block walls and the decrease by uh, uh, minus selling. But the denominator will also increase by minus block walls. So look at this ratio. If uh, the minus selling rate is low, so this ratio will always increase due to the block walls to both nominator and uh, denominator. But however, what we observe from data is this uh, observed mining minus inventory keep declining, which implies that miner keep selling their inventory inventory to users at a very high selling speed. So, so why this is the case? Uh, is is it due to the high volatility or due to some other uh, uncertainty or risk uh, in mining business? We need to investigate. The second stylus fact is about uh, uh, average transfer fee uh, rate. Uh, as transfer fee, as the uh, second source uh, to the uh, to compensate uh, uh, Bitcoin miners, uh, actually we, what we examine here is uh, we examine the average transfer fee rate uh, as showed by the red line, which is computed as the ratio of a total transfer fees at time t divided by the process trans transaction volume at time t. So for a period from that, for example, from 2014 to 2016. Uh, as shown by this blue line, the Bitcoin price is low. Then for this period uh, with a low Bitcoin price, which implies that the demand for uh, for Bitcoin transaction could be low, then the average fee rate is actually flat. But after 2016, when the Bitcoin price gradually climbed up and the Bitcoin de transaction demand also increased, then the average fee rate increased dramatically. So, so why this fee rate is flat at the very beginning and then increase uh, significantly later. We 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 need to uh, we need a model to interpret this. Actually, we, we later we will show this is uh, attributed to several features. One feature is about the uh, the the capacity issue, as showed by this uh, blue line. Blue line shows the block size of uh, in Bitcoin system. So in the in the year before 2016 the block size is not full so the capacity uh, uh, in the bitcoin system, system is not full so in that period the average fee rate is flat but after that when the bitcoin transaction demand exceed the uh, block uh, capacity then the average fee rate will increase dramatically so motivated by these uh, uh, stylized facts and the difference between Bitcoin mining and the gold mining, we develop a continuous time dynamic model for Bitcoin mining by borrowing the idea of a classic hotel model for exhaustible resources. And our model to our best knowledge is the one of um, among few of them could be cal calibrated to empirical data and explain the aforementioned two uh, stylized facts. Our model has uh, implications like we found that high jump risk is one of major forces driving miners to sell their Bitcoin holdings at an early stage, even when Bitcoin price are quite low. And also our model suggests that a high uh, Bitcoin demand leads to a high transfer fee rate. Okay, uh, due to time constraint, we skip the literature review. And uh, then we, we are trying to uh, introduce our model. So our model is actually a resource production model based uh, uh, on hotelians collector setting, cluster setting. Uh, actually, the miner tried to maximize uh, her uh, profit via uh, managing her inventory. Uh, so revenue will uh, equals the price of the Bitcoin multiply the, the miner selling rate. And the, the cost uh, is, uh, is twofold, the liquidation cost and the running cost. And the Q is the miner selling rate, the P is the Bitcoin price, H is the miner's holding inventory. And then, uh, so for first for the cost uh, for the cost function here we fo we first 
we first focus on the liquidation cost simply because the running cost does not affect this minus inventory strategy. But later in our extension of this business model, we, we introduce, we, we, we incorporate the running cost and uh, introduce an exit option to show that this uh, uh, running cost will affect the minus exit decision. But here we just focus on liquidation costs. So the, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin's price is logically given, but uh, uh, it's postmodernly model as a linear function of, uh, of uh, based on minus uh, uh, Bitcoin's uh, de transaction demand. This transaction demand uh, is uh, modeled as a de jump diffusion process, and the minus holding inventory will increase, as shown by this uh, uh, dynamics, will increase by block rewards and increase by transfer fees, multiply the uh, successful uh, mining probability for this miner and then uh, minus the selling rate. So for the Bitcoin price, actually it's uh, usually viewed as an immediate exchange. So we can uh, simply use the quantity equation for money to uh, to model the Bitcoin price. And postmodernly, we assume it's a linear function of uh, on, on the Bitcoin demand, and that this theta is determined uh, by Bitcoin supply and the velocity. And uh, second, for the Bitcoin uh, trans transaction demand, we uh, it has it reflect two features from uh, uh, of Bitcoin. First, Bitcoin is a kind of a new uh, product or new product as a media of change. So the adoption of uh, this uh, uh, Bitcoin we are subject to an S shape uh, diffusion process for new products. So we have this uh, uh, a diffusion term for the uh, for the adoption of a. Uh, this uh, Bitcoin transaction demand. Secondly, the Bitcoin uh, is uh, actually a, a non-government backed media of change. So it, it is usually subject to uh, jump risk as uh, exemplified in Wells uh, QJE paper on, on non-government backed fiat money. So we have this uh, uh, jump, dif jump, jump risk term. And in addition, as uh, we, we will exemplify later, we, we, we observe that the Bitcoin transaction demand has uh, different regimes. So we assume there are high active regime and low active, low active regime in the Bitcoin demand. And uh, then the minus inventory is governed by this uh, equation. The pi, the, the, the minus uh, successful mining probability is given, uh, can be computed as a function of uh, the minus computing power and the, the network's difficult, difficulty level and the, the BT which measures the block rewards is a predetermined function, decreasing function. And IT is the transaction fees we will model in the following slides. Actually, the basic idea is we assume the, there are a lot of users. So, so we assume total volume of submit orders by all users is a linear function. Uh, it's an increasing function depend on the uh, Bitcoin's demand shock and uh, also depends on the, uh, on the inventory holding by all users. And then secondly, we assume the users has, uh, are, are heterogeneous. So they, they pay different level of transfer fees in their submit, submit, submitted orders. So we assume there's a distribution of orders uh, with the different fee rate, which is given by this app. And in addition, this blockchain, uh, this Bitcoin system has a, a capacity issue. So in each time a fixed number of orders can be processed by miners. So give this setup minus uh, faces a, a, an optimization problem by selecting fees with highest uh, to maximize the transfer fees in, in her candidate block uh, such that the, uh, the, cons the capacity will not be exceeded. So the basic, the basic idea is that all the, the miners will select the orders with highest fees into her candidate block until this block will be, uh, be filled. So we will figure out an optimal fee threshold. So when the total now, volume of submitted orders is less than the capacity, then the order with the if the order with zero fee could be processed. But if the the demand the submit orders is higher than the capacity, then only orders with high higher fees could be selected into the candidate blo candidate block. So actually, our uh, our model our model about the miners fee collection uh, mechanism is associated to a f first price auction problem. And uh, the optimum solution is associated with a symmetric Bayesian Nash equilibrium as a study in Basu's uh, 2018 working paper. So then we have our model, we, we can solve our model next. So our, uh, our model has, uh, this, the solution has two uh, cases. In the short run case, because there are uh, block rewards, so the minus value is, uh, uh, will depend on the time. 
But in the long run case, there are no, no block rewards anymore. There are only transaction fees. So in this second case, the minus value does not depend on the uh, time T. So the solution of this uh, 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 problem, it has uh, two implications. The first implication is so we can characterize the minus optimal setting strategy by this equation. Actually, the minus uh, setting uh, strategy is, is associated with two regions. One is the selling region. So when the Bitcoin price is higher than the margin value holding, so the minor uh, is in the selling region. But when the Bitcoin price is lower than the margin, uh, lower than the margin value holding, then the miner uh, will prefer to keep holding uh, her inventory. So this figure shows that the case when there is no jump risk, then the left figure show, uh, shows the two regions for the miner's strategy. The left figure shows the short, short run case, for example, for the year 2014. And the right figure shows the long run case, which means there is no block rewards in, in the future time. So as one can see, um, um, as one can see, that this this uh, setting barrier for the minor setting strategy implies that minor, uh, when there's a low jump risk, the minor play as a role, as a buffer to supply the Bitcoin to uh, users. But uh, we want to examine what happened if uh, there are high jump risk. So the left figure shows the minor setting barrier when there there are high jump risk increase from zero to to about fifty. Then the setting rate, the minor setting barrier will will decrease dramatically to a very low level, close to zero. So, which means high jump risk could motivate the miner to sell the holding to users at an early stage, even when Bitcoin price is low. But could the high volatility achieve such goal? It's actually not uh, so likely. As showed by the right figure, we we let the jump risk to be zero, but we let the volatility increase from 50% to be to be 300%. But the minus setting uh, barrier only decreases uh, by a uh, by a uh, relative low level. Uh, it's, so, which means high volatility is not able to motivate uh, miners to sell their holding to uh, uh, to users at an early stage, even even when Bitcoin's price is extremely low. And uh, then uh, the second implication of our uh, model so solution is we provide a categorization for minus value, even for minor uh, with no uh, uh, block rewards in the future, uh, future time. But later we will show the quantitative results. So next uh, we will calibrate our model to the data. We use uh, uh, monthly data for uh, like a Bitcoin price uh, minus aggregate inventory, uh, market average fee rate, uh, aggregate, aggregate transfer fee from uh, the period 2013 to 2020. And uh, for minus aggregate inventory, we only use data from 2013 to 2015. The reason is after 2015, more and more miners are using the mixing strategy to hide their uh, trans transaction records. So it's very difficult to, uh, to reveal their inventory from tracking uh, their uh, addresses in the Bitcoin system. Uh, Secondly, uh, when we calibrate the, the, the model, we assume uh, we just use the model with the uh, one miner. The implication is in our, in, in our previous model, we, it's a model for an individual miner. So if the system has a large number of miner, if we assume different miner has the same mining probability, then numerical results show that even uh, for these miners, their mining, their setting strategy is uh, homogeneous, approximately homogeneous, regardless uh, of a different level of holding for different miners. So regarding this, we can approximately combine this uh, mi miner together. So we we use the, this model as with only one miner to uh, calibrate to the, to the data. And this figure shows the member pool transaction count, which is a proxy to the uh, total volume submitted by users uh, L in our uh, model setup. So as observed from this mempool transaction count, it has uh, uh, different regimes, uh, high regime, uh, high active regime and low active regime. And then we calibrate our model to data. First for certain parameter, we set a value for them. For example, for the jump, uh, jump risk, we let the jump intensity to be 57, Z to be 0 0.9, which is uh, equivalent to be a 10% downward jump uh, once a week in a year. So this is the, 
uh, problem that we borrow from uh, estimation in existing literature, which is actually a mild one. Uh, and then for the rest parameters, we try to match our model implied uh, transfer phase and inventory with the uh, uh, observed uh, transfer phase and inventory by uh, minimize a, uh, this uh, least square uh, relative error term. So this is our uh, uh, calibration parameters. We, we, we want to show that our calibration results about uh, uh, inventory and average transfer fees. So in this figure, the red line shows our model implied minus inventory. The dashed black line shows observed minus inventory. So as one can see, the, our model calibration can match the uh, observed data. The reason is we, we show that jump risk could motivate a uh, miner uh, setting their holding to users at an early stage, even when Bitcoin price is low. So this is the, due to the jump risk. The second one is about the, the implied average fee rate showed by this red line and the, the dash line showed the uh, observed data. So as one can see in this uh, uh, period from 2014 to 2016, the, the implied average fee rate is flat simply due to the capacity issue. Because in this period, the capacity of the Bitcoin system is not uh, filled. So in this scenario, the, uh, the average fee rate is flat. But after that, when the Bitcoin demand, transaction demand exceeds the capacity of the Bitcoin system, then the average fee rate increased dramatically. Actually, our model calibration can, can catch up the magnitude of the increase in the observed uh, market average fee rate uh, due to uh, several settings. The one setting is we assume the users are heterogeneous, so different users pay different level of transfers in their submit, some submitted orders. Second one is we assume there are different regimes in the Bitcoin transaction transaction demand. So these two settings ensures us uh, our model can calibrate to the uh, uh, increase of the magnitude in the average fee rate. And uh, then we show additional quantitative analysis uh, about uh, a quanti quantitative justification for minus value when uh, the minus, minus, the Bitcoin mining are only compensated by transfer fees. So this figure, uh, in this figure, we assume the minus uh, inventory is zero. We assume there is a constant, uh, uh, we assume there is a constant demand shock. So uh, as one can see, uh, we plot the minus value from 2010 to 2016. So in the early stage, because uh, the minus value is dominated by the block rewards, so the declining block rewards will, will lead to declining minus value. So this is the, in the uh, first stage. But later, when more and more, uh, 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 when the block rewards are, are, are decreasing dramatically and more and more, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin are supplied to miners and the miners selling more and more Bitcoin to users, then the miners could able to collect more and more transaction fees. So in the second stage, miners value is dominated by the transaction fees. So we will see that this uh, increase in transaction fees will uh, lead to an increase minus value. And in a long run, then the block reward there, there there are no block rewards anymore. Then the minus value is only uh, decided by the transaction fees. So we can see because we assume a stable uh, demand shock. So in long run, the minus value is uh, uh, de decided by transfer fees is quite stable. And also we also show the results for different jump risk. So high jump risk could, uh, could lower minus uh, value, although the minus value is still in a U shape. Uh, right, uh, am I still, okay. Uh, so, uh, do I still have any few minutes? Okay, uh, thank you. So then uh, let's uh, conclude. Uh, <clears throat> so we propose a, a model uh, to study Bitcoin mining by extending the classic hotel model with the inventory and the feedback supply. And uh, we provide a quantitative justification of minus value based on, on, uh, on transfer fees and the block rewards. And our model is calibrated to data and can explain the dynamics uh, average transfer fee rate and the minus inventory holding in observed data. And we also show jump risk is a key factor to understand minus inventory holding. Uh, okay, thank you very much. And uh, 
questions are warmly welcome.